There was this chunky one, and I guess she just got her swimsuit. There was this one, one of those chubby berry faces, the lips all bunched together under her nose, with hair that hadn't quite frizzed right, and a chin that was too long. You know, the kind of girl other girls think is very striking and attractive, but never quite makes it, as they very well know, which is why they like her so much. And then the third one. She was the queen. She kind of led them, the other two peeking around and making their shoulders round. She didn't look around, not this queen. She just walked straight on slowly, on these long white prima donna legs. She came down a little hard on he her heels, as if she didn't walk in her bare feet that much, putting down her heels and then letting the weight move along to her toes as if she was testing the floor with every step, putting a little deliberate extra action into it. You never know for sure how girls' minds work, do you really think it's a mind in there, or just a little buzz like a bee in a glass jar? She had the sort of hair that the sun and salt had bleached, and kind of a prim face. Walking into the A&P like that, I suppose it's the only kind of face you can have. She must have felt in the corner of her eye, me, and over my shoulder Stokeski in the second slot watching. But she didn't tip. The sheep pushing their carts down the aisle. You could see them, when Queenie's white shoulders dawned on them, kind of jerk or hop or hiccup, but their eyes snapped back into their own baskets, and on they pushed. I bet you could set off dynamite in an A&P, and the people would, by large, keep reaching and checking oatmeal off their list, but there was no doubt, this jiggled them. Oh, Daddy. I feel faint. Oh, okay. Stoikski's married, with two babies chalked up on his fuselage already, but as far as I can tell, that's the only difference. Is it done yet? What he meant was, our town is five miles from a beach, with a big summer colony out on the point. But we're right in the middle of town, and the women generally put on a shirt or shorts or something before they get out of the car into the street. It's not as if we're on the Cape. We're north of Boston, and there's people in this town who haven't seen the ocean for 20 years. The store is pretty empty, it being Thursday afternoon. So there was nothing much to do except lean on the register and wait for the girls to show up again. The whole store was like a pinball machine, and I didn't know which tunnel they'd come out from. After a while, they come around out of the far aisle, Queenie still leading the way and holding a little gray jar in her hand. The girls come to me. Queenie puts down the jar and I take it into my fingers ice cold. Kingfish fancy herring snacks and pure sour cream. 49 cents. Now her hands are empty and I wonder where the money's coming from. Still, with that prim look, she lifts a folded dollar bill out of the hollow at the center of her nubbled pink top. The jar went heavy in my hand. Really, I thought that was so cute. Then, everybody's luck begins to run out. Lengel comes in from haggling with a truck full of cabbages on the lot and is about to scuttle into that door marked manager behind which he hides all day when the girls touch his eye. Girls, this isn't the beach. My mother asked me to pick up a jar of Harry's That's all right, but this isn't the beach. Her voice kind of startled me, the way voices do when you see the people first, coming out so flat and dumb, yet kind of tony too, the way it ticked over pick up and snacks. We weren't doing any shopping. We just came in for one thing. That makes no difference. We want you decently dressed when you come in here. We are decent. Well, I don't want to argue with you. Next time you come in, make sure your shoulders are covered. It's our policy. Sammy, have you rung up this order? No. The girls, and who'd blame them, are in a hurry to get out. I quit. Did you say something, Sammy? Yeah, I said I quit. Um, I thought you did. You didn't have to embarrass them like that. It was they who were embarrassing us. Oh, fiddles you do. <laughs> I don't think you know what you're saying. I know you don't, but I do. You don't want to do this to your mom and dad. You'll feel this for the rest of your life. I look around for my girls, but they're gone, of course. There wasn't anybody but some young married screaming with her children about some candy they didn't get by the door of a powder blue Falcon station wagon. Looking back in the big windows, over the bags of peat moss and aluminum lawn furniture stacked on the pavement, I could see Lengel in my place in the slot, checking the sheep through. His face was dark and gray and his back stiff, as if he'd just had an injection of iron, and my stomach kind of felt as I felt how hard the world was going to be to me hereafter.